Have you seen our video about the Crokinole Assist or the Helper or the Apple or whatever you want to call it when you set up an opportunity for a future 20? Regardless of what you call it, it is typically used in doubles play, but not always. In this video, we are going to dig in and take a nice close look at what's called the self-assist. Let's take a look. Jeremy Tracy here of Tracy Boards. Please give us a like, a comment, a share, a subscribe. It all helps to spread the word of the greatest game on earth. Shameless self-promotion of the channel? Check. The self-assist is much like the regular assist, except it's a lot like it's on steroids. It is way tougher to do it well. It has a low success rate. This is a very low percentage shot. So you may be asking, come on now, Jeremy, why would I even consider doing this? And the reason is that because when you can pull this off and do it successfully, it is super satisfying, a massive tide turner in any Crokinole match and could easily become the TSN turning point in the game. So as we go through this, we're going to do four things. Number one, we are going to look at the basic concept of the self-assist, what it is you're trying to accomplish. So fun. Then number two, we are going to look at all the ways that this can go horribly wrong. Why is this such a low percentage shot? Number three, we will cover the different ways that this could set up as a possibility on the board for you. When it may set up that you'll use the self-assist. Most importantly, we are going to take a nice close look at the absolutely perfect self-assist and why when you do it perfectly it can become such a TSN turning point in the game. And number four, we are going to look at how you can counteract or neutralize this should your opponent ever have the gall to try to use this against you. So number one, the concept of the self-assist. It is very much like the assist in doubles except you need to think about it is you yourself who is going to be taking that next shot that you are trying to set up. So with this, with the self-assist, you are going to want to make sure that you knock the opponent's button. Rather than knocking it off, you're knocking it in toward the center hole and either just to one side or the other or maybe it's just barely beyond that center hole. The idea is that you on your next turn are going to be set up for a perfect and easy 20 to help turn the tide in the game. Number two, how could this possibly go wrong? It can go wrong in so many ways. Now thankfully, there is no video footage to have proof of what I'm about to tell you, but there was a time when I played against Jason Beerling in the Golden Horseshoe Tournament in Hamilton. The reason there's no footage is because I bribed Nathan from Crokinole Center to destroy all the evidence. But what happened was I was playing against Jason and, and as often happens when you play against Jason, I ended up on the wrong side of the 20 count. He had more 20s than me. And and because I've been practicing the self-assist, I said, now's the time. I'm going to turn the tide on Mr. Beerling and use the self-assist. When I did that, I successfully knocked his disc straight into the center hole. I gave him a 20. Pro tip, don't do that. <laughs> At which point, Jason, being such a kind, gracious competitor, said, thank you, Jeremy. And I said, you're welcome, Jason. And the round continued. Of course, he was able to easily knock my disc off and being the way that I am, I decided to double down and I'm gonna try it again. If at first you don't succeed, make another mistake. This time, I again was unsuccessful in my self-assist. I didn't put it in, but I did set him up perfectly to go through his own disc hitting mine and his shooter went in and put me even deeper in the 20 count. At which point, Jason said again, thank you, Jeremy. And I said, you're welcome, Jason. And the round continued. But the truth is, if I had to do all over again, I'd still try that because I was going to lose that round anyway. I had nothing to lose. This is more something you use in desperation mode. Now, fast forward a few months, you think I'd have learned my lesson. I did the exact same thing against Brian Cook in Budapest. You can watch this footage because apparently Nathan put his bribery prices up. I could no longer afford to have the evidence destroyed. Same thing, I went for the self-assist. Tracy possibly going for a hide here. Oh, a bit of an assist play there. 
test and Brian was able to feed it to me by going through his own disc, dropping a 20 and obliterating me. It's a pretty nice hide, but I think Cook will have an opportunity to go through his own to try to make the takeout. Be interesting to see if he tries to peel off the disc that he sends into the red. Oh, nicely done with the 20 there. Those are just a couple of examples of how this technique can go wrong, but we're also going to look at the flip side of that, uh, how it can go incredibly right. Number three, we're looking at the different setups that happen on the board when you can possibly consider using the self-assist. For example, if there is a button uh, of your opponents that's sitting somewhere on your side of the board, and basically anytime it's sitting on your side of the board and you have the option to bump it in, but these op some of these options are less than ideal. If, for example, you do it from the side, even if you are successful and you set yourself up perfectly, but you've left your disc wide out in the open, what's going to happen is your opponent will very easily and skillfully take that out so there's two of their buttons on the board. You are set up for a successful, you've successfully pulled off the assist, you drain a 20, so you have even the 20 count, but now they have a disc on and they have an open board. In that situation, you are really, really, really putting your marbles in the basket of counting on your opponent to make a mistake. Sometimes it works, but not always. The other thing is that if you do it straight in front of yourself, the likelihood of them being able to go through their, their, their own disc and still hit yours is quite high. So those options, although they're there, they're not necessarily going to work all that well against a super skilled player. Now, what you've all been waiting for, the absolutely perfect self-assist situation. In my experience, even though I've shared how this has failed miserably for me in competitive play, it has worked out occasionally. It works best when your opponent's button is between the two pegs right in front of you, somewhere on that 15 line. What you want to do is successfully bump theirs up, again, like as with all these examples, setting yourself up for an assist. But in order for it to be perfect, what you want to do is have your shooter end up tucked away hidden behind a peg. So you've done, you've accomplished two things with one shot. One, you've set yourself up, and two, you've hidden and left your opponent with an extremely tough shot. Now, why this can become such a tide turner is because if you look at this situation, your opponent is going to have a really hard time even making a valid shot by contacting your disc because the peg is in the way if they look at it this way, their own disc is in the way if they look at it in their other path. So a couple things can happen. One, they just straight up miss. Therefore, you end up set up perfectly for an assist 20 and you've still got a button hidden on your side of the board. What makes this even more of a tide turner is when your opponent attempts to go through their own, but they don't make contact with yours, so they lose their shooter and their button that they have in the middle, leaving you with an open board. Then if you can hit that open 20, massive shift of tide because then you've still got a button hidden on your side of the board. So in some of the other examples that we looked at were things where it leaves your shooter out in the open and I said in that situation you are counting on your opponent to make a mistake. When you were able to successfully pull off that perfect self-assist, you're not hoping they make a mistake, you are almost forcing them into a situation where they're extremely likely to make a mistake. That is what makes this the perfect self-assist. Number four, what we're going to dig into now is how you can counteract someone using the self-assist against you. How can you neutralize that? How can you make sure that they're not able to force you into making a mistake? So let's say you're sitting there playing and your opponent successfully does this. The first thing I'd encourage you to do is look at all your options. Is there a way for you to play through your own and successfully make a valid shot? Even if you don't drop a 20, you're gonna end up with two buttons on and you've dug them into a little bit deeper hole. But ideally, if you're able to go through your own, make a legal shot and drop a 20, like Brian Cook did to me, it digs them into an even deeper hole. But let's say they truly have successfully reached the pinnacle of self-assist accomplishment 
and they leave you completely jammed up. You look at all your options and you are like, there is a 99% chance I am gonna biff this shot and you don't feel good about that. You absolutely do have the option to do what we call trough your shot. That's when you simply take your disc and drop it in the gutter or you set it and just shoot it off to the side. Just keep in mind that if you use this and you do go ahead and trough your shot, I will lose all respect for you. Your friends and family will probably disown you and your self-worth could take such a hit, it takes years to recover. But hey, you'll win two points in a round of Crokinole, so it's up to you. <laughs> Clearly I'm joking. Truthfully, in a tight situation, in an important match, this can absolutely be your number one go-to strategy, your safest bet in order to try to win that round. But nine times out of 10, when you're playing casual play, I would absolutely encourage you to go for that shot. It's either going to lead to absolutely awesome, incredible, amazing shots that frustrate your opponent, or it's gonna lead to lots of hilarity, is that a word, hilarity? And confusion and chaos on that board that keeps people coming back for more. There you have it, an up close and personal look at the self-assist in Crokinole. Just know that this won't present itself in every single round that you play. It's more of something that you just want to keep in mind as an option and an opportunity to turn the tide in a game. And when you learn to use this successfully, you may find yourself one day featured as the TSN turning point of the game. Mark my words, we will get Crokinole into the Olympics. Our hope is that ultimately this will lead to some more self fives, some more of you mock hanging your head in shame, and most importantly, even more fun and laughter as you continue to enjoy the greatest game on earth. That's got it. Mm, wow. I think that does it. It's pretty clear I'm joking there, right? <laughs> All right, no bloopers in this take. But when you use, <clears throat> so, <clears throat> wow, start again. Is slight, uh, that is unfortunate. <laughs> and I think we should just cut it.